Tuesday, February 16, 2021. Start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. All right, Wayne, would you please take roll? Certainly. Mr. Lewis? Present. Mrs. Grabinowski? Present. Mr. Fedor? He's absent. He notified us of his situation, so he's excused. Mr. Jones? Present. Mr. Franz? Present. Mrs. Walker? Present. Mr. Lake? Present. So we have six people. Uh, any matter needs to have four votes to pass. Um, in your packet, you had, there was two sets of minutes, one from the January 19th regular meeting um, of the Planning Commission. Are there any comments, <clears throat> additions, deletions to those minutes? If there are none, is there a motion to approve? So moved. So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed by nay, those minutes pass. And there's in also in minutes from the February 2nd, 2021 special meeting. Is there any comments, uh, additions, deletions to those minutes? Um, no. None. Uh, is there a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right, I will abstain since I was not present. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Uh, by nay, all opposed by nay. Okay, motion carries five zero. Those are approved. On the docket are two continuance requests, uh, both actually from December meeting. Um, the first doc number on the docket is 2020-44 DP Appaloosa Crossing, Crossing Master Signage Program, 3295 South US 421. Petition for development plan approval of a master signage program for the Appaloosa Crossing commercial development zone rural professional business PB and rural general business GB and within Michigan Road overlay MRO. Is the petitioner present? Mr. Franz, before we jump in, I, I do want to create your opportunity to yeah. have a public acknowledge. Is there anybody in the audience who'd like to be acknowledged? I actually have that written down today. I just missed it. So if you do, please raise your hand. Mr. Franz, Zali Salonis has raised her hand. That is all. All right. Okay, now to the petitioner, please. Yes, Mr. President, members of the commission, it's uh, Matt Price uh, here today on behalf of Harris FLP and Appaloosa Crossing for uh, approval of our master signage program. Uh, you may recall that this was initially heard back in November and we received uh, feedback on the proposal. Um, and then uh, we've had it continued a couple times since then and are coming to you tonight with uh, a different proposal uh, for how to initiate this program than what was originally proposed. You may recall that originally we had provided a diagram that showed uh, the anticipated locations of each single tenant sign as well as the multi-tenant uh, signage. And I think a uh, a good comment that was raised uh, during that discussion was, um, you know, how can you be that specific about the location of signs when you don't have individual users for each lot at this stage? And so uh, we took that uh, comment into account as well as other comments and are coming to you this evening with a modified proposal, which is to seek approval of our site, uh, excuse me, of our sign designs both with, both with respect to our multi-tenant design and our single tenant design, but leaving the location approval to the individual development plans that uh, will come before you as petitions are uh, submitted and heard in the ordinary course of the project. Now, the individual sign uh, uh, applications as uh, individual development plans will come in will still be subject to the commitments that are of record uh, with respect to the proposal, 
Uh, so it would still be reviewed against those individual commitments. But what we're not seeking tonight is approval of the individual sign uh, locations, but rather just the sign uh, designs themselves. And I'll tell you what our intention is going forward as, uh, as you frame your comments and questions. What our intention is that we are developing uh, a packet of information that we give uh, potential purchasers. And part of that packet that we would like to include is an approved sign package that here is what your individual signs need to look like. Right now we're doing that through a little bit of a method of, of uh, uh, just individual conversations with each uh, purchaser. In fact, Roger Kilmer and I have corresponded within the last week or so about a specific sign that's going to be coming before you in, uh, I believe, at next month's meeting. But uh, we just think it would be more efficient if we had an approved sign design with regard to size, building materials, landscaping treatments, uh, so that we could tell our suitors that this is the approved sign and that they need to conform their signs uh, to that approved uh, design. Uh, and I should mention that I have uh, Rick Green with me uh, this evening from Axis Architects, who's the, uh, uh, the individual who developed the exhibit that, that shows what our uh, preferred sign design is. Uh, so with that, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have and appreciate uh, your patience in working with us over this last uh, couple of months. Thanks. All right, thank you. Um, at this time, I'll ask, is there anybody from the public who'd like to make a comment on this matter? If so, please raise your hand. All right. Being none, um, staff commentary. I have any staff comment on this one, Wayne? Thank you. Uh, certainly, Roger Kilmer provided a, a very detailed for a report for your consideration this evening. Uh, certainly it covers a lot of information, but uh, certainly staff is supportive of the petition as it's been submitted and is happy to answer uh, questions that you may have. All right. At this point in time, I'll open it up to anybody on the members of the plan commission if they have any questions uh, for Mr. Price. I was happy to see something like this because I was trying to figure out in my mind, and I'm not an engineer, nor am I an architect, how you were going to establish that without the business person having any input at all. So I thought this was better than what you presented at first. Appreciate that. So I guess my question is the multi-tenant signs, will those be like individual development plans for the multi-tenant signs and then yeah. the single tenant signs would come in as part of a site development plan for an individual tenant type of thing. Right. Yeah, so what, what, what we envision happening is, for example, with the shops that were approved back in uh, late spring last year up in the Northwest corner, that what will happen is, is that the, the sign plan will need to be submitted for that individual development. So for example, if that was going to include a multi-tenant multi sign, then that multi-tenant sign would be presented as, the sign, as part of the sign package for that project. And the same with the single uh, tenant uh, properties, either as part of the development plan, a comprehensive development plan where the entire package is being presented or as part of the sign plan for that development plan, they would come in with their individual uh, um, sign for that lot. Okay. So the buildings that are approved that are multi-tenant, I mean, where are those? I mean, are, is that going to be a separate process to approve those locations then? It will be. The way, the way, I, the way we're envisioning it, and, and Mr. DeLong could certainly uh, weigh in if I'm misstating this, but what we understand the process will be is that we would need to come in with a sign plan that would include the location of any multi-tenant sign, for example, for the shops. And that step has not been completed yet in connection with, for example, the development of the, the shops in the Northwest section of the project. That's a step that still needs to be completed, which would include the location of that sign. And then we would be subject to the commitments with regard to the overall number. Um, 
we're actually permitted more uh, outlots than we are signs. The, 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 there, are, there are greater sign limitations than there are uh, numbers of lots. So we have to be uh, you know, economical about our use of signs. And so we've not come in with individual sign plans yet for the development plans for either our uh, medical office building or the, sh or the uh, shops. But that is a step that we would be required to do before a sign could be built. Like really what, I'm asking, what you're asking for today is, a, is basically approval of the design of the signs. That's correct. All right. So what you're asking for this evening is for us to approve the two types of signs you have here, the multi-tenant and the single tenant. Yes. Now, what you haven't confirmed yet is that whether you'll need to use a multi-tenant or a single tenant sign on each lot. Because right now you've got the, the multi-tenant building up there at the northern end. And then you've got a smaller multi-tenant building down at the south end, correct? That's right. That's so right. Then, but will the multi-tenant building at the south end need a multi-tenant monument sign? It could. Now, and now, and I think really this was part of the dialogue that that I think we found very helpful last when we when we talked about this back in November, I believe it was November, but it might subject to the commitments, and I'll tell you what the commitments are, which is that we are permitted two multi-tenant signs on 421 and one on uh, 146th Street. There's a further limitation on the signage along 421, which is that one of those signs can be in the general business frontage and one of those multi-tenant signs can be in the professional business. And so it's possible that the medical office building will need a multi-tenant sign, uh, but it would have to be as it is. It would have to be in the professional business uh, area and it would be subject to a development plan filing to approve the location of that sign. Then what's going to happen with the gas station? What are they going to want? Right, right now, and that is the that is the sign actually that Roger and I have been corresponding on. Right now, there have they have a single tenant, what I would call a monument sign, and and it's somewhat illustrative of the issue we're confronting in dealing with purchasers, is that the sign I would say is similar to what our preferred design is, but it's not. Uh, identical. It's not, it's, it, to me, it's something that does not meet the standards of what the plan commission is going to be expecting. And so, and what, frankly, and what we expect as well. And so what we're, what we're doing is wanting to use this approved sign plan as part of our package that uh, here's our overlay zone requirements. Here's our architectural theme that we develop. And then the third tier being here's the approved sign package, at least with regard to design. They still understand they need to come in and get uh, the actual locations approved. But then they'll also understand they need to comply with some of the approved design details. Yes. Yeah. We, we heard that we, we heard that message loud and clear uh, during the, uh, I think that was the December meeting, but that, that's, this is an outgrowth of those, those two meetings really, and trying to get ahead of this. Do you think you're going to use all 11 of the single tenant signs? You know, it's, it's possible we'll use fewer. I'll tell you why. We have a user potentially in the uh, northeast corner of the project that actually takes more than one outlet and I don't think is going to seek or need two signs. So there, I think there will be some economy in terms of not needing necessarily all of the signs that are permitted. Is the uh, residential component going to want any signage out on either 146 or Michigan? We have, I've have not, I've not heard that request, and uh, uh, I do not believe they will. Um, that is something that uh, we have in discussion now, uh, but but there's not been a request for that to date. No, and frankly, I. That would be an offsite signage for that for that project, and I think 
uh, for that to occur, uh, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but I think that would definitely require dialogue with staff and probably a variance if that were sought. Um, so it's not, but it is not contemplated today. Anybody else have any other questions? If there aren't any, is would somebody like to make a motion on this matter? I will. I move if I can see my paperwork here in my office, my light's not too bright. I move that docket number 2020-43 DP to allow for the sign of the, the development plan approval of a master signage program for Appaloose Crossing development as depicted in exhibit 4C, zoned rural professional business, PB, and rural general business, GB, and within the Michigan Road Overlay, MRO, be approved best based on findings of facts in the staff report and recommended and submitted be approved. All right, is there a second? Second. Is there any further discussion? <clears throat> Wayne, would you please take roll? You're on mute. You're muted, Wayne. Hit the wrong button. Uh, Mrs. Grabanowski? Yeah, uh, aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Mr. Franz? Aye. Mrs. Walker? Aye. Mr. Lake? Aye. Mr. Lewis? Aye. All right, motion carries 6 0. So you have your approval. Thanks very much. Thank you, Mr. President. On to the next matter on the docket. Docket number 2020 48 DP. 21st Amendment, Outlot I of the Appaloosa Crossing, 3295 South U.S. 421. Petition for development plan approval for a 12,500 square foot commercial building on Outlot I of Appaloosa Crossing, which is zoned Rural General Business GB and within the Michigan Road Overlay MRO. Before I ask the petitioner to begin, uh, we need to have a motion to accept first class mail for notification um, of this matter. Is there a motion on moved. Is there a second? Second. All right. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed by nay. Motion carries. Petitioner, please. Uh, good evening, members of the Planning Commission. Uh, Tim Oaks here this evening on behalf of the petitioner 21st Amendment. As the commission will recall, um, this was before you back in December. Uh, at that time, um, Really, we, I asked uh, a, a question, which was um, uh, design following uh, what I would call more traditional Zionsville theme um, or a design that was consistent with the architectural theme that had been established for Appaloosa Crossing based on uh, the two development plans that had already been approved for uh, Appaloosa Crossing. I think it was rather clear, um, I don't know, maybe even unanimous, but very clear that um, the desire was that the, the building uh, adopt the architectural themes that had been established for the rest of Appaloosa Crossing. Um, our architect went to work on that it, uh, because of the holidays, I, I believe it took a little bit longer than we would have liked, but um, he was able to accomplish that. The building um, remains the same in terms of, of size, which is 12,500 square feet. Um, and there are certain aspects of the building that we were able to keep um, that actually um, hearken or give a nod to, uh, I'd say the Zionsville theme, uh, almost a colonial style in the sense of a, a significant amount of, of brick, of masonry, rectangular building uh, symmetrical as it faces uh, Michigan um, with a, a pitched roof and gables. But at the same time, uh, we changed, uh, first we changed the color palette to match the balance of the um, 
Appaloosa Crossing and the colors that had been established. Then we started adding uh, features and themes to tie it to the rest of Appaloosa Crossing. That is um, uh, the board and batten uh, in the gables. There's uh, a metal roof on a portion of it um, to give it kind of the uh, agrarian theme uh, that that was established. And we, we think we've struck a, a, a very nice balance uh, so that this now does fit in uh, well. Um, uh, if you look at the site plan as well, you'll notice that there is uh, parking that is located on the south side of the building. Um, that parking we will propose that it not be installed initially um, as is allowed in uh, this zoning classification with the zoning administrator's approval, but that should parking be needed that could be added. If it is added, it the parking ratios would meet the requirements of uh, the, the zoning ordinance. Um, the, other, the other significant change that we, that was made since the December hearing, which was clearly expressed, is the front of the building, the front entrance, the front door, if you will, uh, is clearly facing towards uh, Michigan Road. Um, and we made that very clear. So um, with that, um, be happy to answer any questions that the commission might have. All right, thank you. Uh, at this point in time, is there any members of the public who'd like to make a comment on this matter? If so, please <clears throat> raise your hand to be recognized. There are no hands raised. All right. Um, at this point, I'll take uh, staff's comments on this. Wayne, would you please do that? Thank you again. An excellent report. I uh, provided to you by Roger Kilmer. Uh, certainly the staff is supportive of this petition. Certainly the one comment that we've talked about, certainly in the pre-meeting as well, uh, is the, the, the expectation of the Board of Zoning Appeals are related to the standardization of, of certain elements of the building. Uh, the context of the building like has been discussed already. Certainly another component is the lighting, uh, the height of the lighting elements, the style of the lighting elements. Certainly there's you know, is there some room for a little bit of deviation here and there, uh, given maybe a manufacturer won't be available here in the in the future. But at this in, in that same breath is color temperature and and similarities across uh, across the palette of the entire development. So that's, uh, I think, an item that's still, you know, needs a little bit more fine tuning in terms of uh, the plan commission's satisfaction uh, with the lighting elements as they're proposed. Uh, and I'm happy and certainly staff is, is prepared to uh, take any additional questions. All right, thank you, Wayne. At this point in time, I'll open up the members of the plan commission for any questions. This is more, once again, kind of general. One, I do like the look of the building. It has much better look all four sides. I mean, even though it's gonna have one rear kind of a, a flat surface, but still it's, I think it's a better design than the previous. And it by changing the, the roof profile to have it open in the center kind of lowered the, the whole overall look of it. It'll, I think it'll tie in nice. Um, as we just got done with signage, we've been talking about lighting. We know the, the overall plan is changing to add a, a residential component. It, has there been any discussions, and this might go back to Wayne and, and Roger about any kind of like either internal signage on the buildings or some type of minor monument signage. Eventually you're gonna end up with a pretty long drive behind the building with multiple buildings on it. And what I'm seeing is just no provision for once you're on the internal Appaloosa drive to figure out what's what. That makes sense? I mean, so I drive down behind Target and Home Depot and Kohl's and Office Depot and all that stuff. And there's no signage back there. And thankfully I've done it a hundred times so I can usually remember. But for the average person using that kind of drive, there, there's just nothing back there to figure out where you wanna go. What do we, what, what's the process? 
involving something like that? Does it? Who's who makes that call? Well, I think what you're touching on is directional signage, and that would certainly be something that the developer could could look to provide, and it's certainly something that's supported by the ordinance. Um, I know that's not Mr. Oaks's charge this evening necessarily, but certainly the staff can explore that with with the developer. It could be that the developer has no real desire to provide directional uh, behind the buildings because if there was, it, it could end up leading folks into the residential area. So it might be purposeful that there is a lack of directional signage, but we're happy to certainly explore that. Well, then if the tenant, if, if uh, 21st Amendment wants some sort of signage on the back of their building on the east elevation, is that a, a separate request then? And I mean, currently they're not really showing any signage on the front other than the beer, wine, spirits piece. So in the rural area, the signage ordinance is, is fairly uh, helpful in terms of the amount of signage that one can put on a building. And certainly I think what you're also driving at Mr. Jones is the, is back in the day, 2006, when this project was originally approved, commercial signage on the back of the buildings may not have been an issue because it was facing towards a commercial uh, integrated center. Now that area is facing into a residential development and that light spillage uh, might be something that you're touching upon in terms of the intrusiveness of the, of the lighting, of the, of the glowing signs uh, and or uh, other issues. Is that what you're touching upon? No, it's not so much light spillage. It's just general, you know, if, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Wayfinding. Just straight up good old fashioned wayfinding. When somebody's back there on Appaloosa Trail, you know, how are we going to be able to tell what's what from the, the back side of the buildings? You know, in a lot of the stores over at Flag Terrace, they have printed on the door mm -hmm. in very nice printing what the buildings are, what you're entering for delivery people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not that That's I hang out at people's back doors a lot, but they're, they're, printing on those doors. Yeah. That looks nice. Thanks, and the only reason I'm thinking about this is we just got done talking about, you know, the signage for the, the development as a whole. So, yeah. So when speaking of signage, um, has there been any discussion about where that single tenant signage is going to go. I mean, I realize we just approved the, the, the signage um, language on the prior docket item, but has there been any discussion on where the sign, monument sign is going to go for the, the single tenant here? We, um, we've been waiting for the approval that just occurred before this hearing to, uh, to help determine that. Um, and we, we understand that if this is going to have a single tenant monument sign, that that would require um, that we, we probably have to come back just like the other two um, out lots that have already been approved. Um, we, are, we have to go back and have that conversation with the developer now that their package is approved. Uh, we, we're certainly willing to listen to suggestions, but um, because that decision has not yet been made. I mean, I, I don't really, I mean, I'll let you guys decide that with the developer and figure out how that stuff goes. Um, I got a question about the why, I mean, the lighting uh, it's slightly different than what is being used by the other, uh, I guess it's the other two approved out outbuild outbuildings. Um, what's is there a reason that it's different? And um, the more? the the reason it was different was because the, these light standards date back to what was originally, I think, anticipated by the developer, and they've they haven't been changed. Assuming that there's no um, significant cost increase on the lights um, 21st amendment these these lights are not 
part of their, their branding. So assuming that um, there's not an appreciable cost increase, a significant cost increase, 21st Amendment would be willing to use uh, the same lighting, same height, same style, same color temperature. That That is not an issue for, for 21st Amendment. Okay. I want to, you know, echo what Mr. Jones said. I do appreciate your, your your efforts to modify the building to something that fits better. So I appreciate that. Um, I think it, it does look quite a bit better. So thanks very much. Thank you. Is there any other questions, comments from anybody else? If there are none, is uh, is there a motion on this matter? I'll go ahead and do it. I move that the uh, waiver of architectural building design requirements be approved based on the findings in the staff report, Exhibit 6, as presented. I move that the waiver of building materials be approved based on the findings in the staff report, Exhibit 6, as presented. I move the docket number 2020-48-DP to allow for the development plan approval of a 12,500 square foot single tenant building on outlet I, uh, the 1.5 acre plus or minus, within the Appaloosa Crossing Development Zone Rural General Business, GB, and within the Michigan Road Overlay MRO B approved, utilizing the design flexibility section of the ordinance regarding parking spaces based on the findings in the staff report and the staff recommendations, submitted findings of fact, and subject to resolution of outstanding review items identified by the town engineer in Exhibit 5 of the staff report and submitted of a compliant landscape plan. All right, so those are three separate votes. Those are separate votes, correct? I uh, agree to that. So... Dan, you're on mute. So the first matter, Dan, we have to take several motions. Mo These are several motions, correct, Dan? Yes. Okay. So the first, the first motion is there a sec? Is there a second on the first motion? Second. All right. Is there any comments, discussion? Being none, Wayne, would you please take roll? Certainly, Mr. Franz. Aye. Mrs. Walker. Aye. Mr. Lake. Aye. Mr. Lewis. Aye. Mrs. Grabanowski. Aye. Mr. Jones. Aye. All right, that motion carries 6-0. And then the motion on the waiver of building materials, is there a second on that one? Second. All right, any further discussion? Wayne, would you please take roll? Mrs. Walker. Aye. Mr. Lake. Aye. Mr. Lewis. Aye. Mrs. Grabanowski. Aye. Mr. Jones. Aye. Mr. France. Aye. That motion also carries 6 0. And then on the motion to approve the development plan, is there a second on that map, that one? Second. Is there any further discussion, comment? Wayne, would you please take roll? Mr. Lake. Sorry, aye. Mr. Lewis. Aye. Mrs. Grabanowski. Aye. Mr. Jones. Aye. Mr. Franz. Aye. Mrs. Walker. Aye. And that motion carries also carries 6 0. So you have your approvals. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. Good night. At this point in time, is there any? Other matters to be discussed? I can provide some uh, very quick updates for you. Uh, okay. so first off on the uh, form-based code, uh, the town is moving through uh, legal review of the, of the contract. So we look to have that taken care of uh, fairly quickly. Uh, your Zinesville Gateway area 
I don't have a specific updates related to the any future timing, um, but certainly the, the project continues to move through its uh, iterations uh, internally as we fine tune and, and research and, and, and come through the, the data that's come in. And certainly we'll have some output, I would suspect, in, in about a 45 day give or take window uh, for uh, to provide for you. Um, also, I want to touch upon some email correspondence that came to you uh, through uh, through the email system uh, related to the park. Uh, certainly the project was, uh, some questions were asked of the plan commission, certainly as staff and your secretary, we, we responded and certainly I believe we copied you on that response. In the meantime, some additional uh, correspondence has been generated. So I want to provide you an update to that as one of the questions was asked, um, is the park coming back as any sort of amendment uh, for your consideration in any future iterations? And the answer to that question is, staff does not have an answer to that question. Uh, we have given the petitioner, uh, the, the, the park developer, uh, information related to their secondary plat submittal, uh, that there is at least one component, uh, which is the central water system that doesn't match up with the, uh, the preliminary plat that, that this commission saw uh, about 18 months, 16 months or so ago. And if that is the plan, uh, and that's the plan that's to be constructed, it would require the plan commission's approval. Uh, so that could be an amendment that you might see. Uh, the park the project might move forward with a central water system that meets this, the drawing that you saw 16, 18 months ago. So I wanted to provide that update to you. Uh, but yeah, the staff continues to correspond with interested parties. Uh, we do have a meeting coming up virtually later this month uh, to, uh, to uh, offer additional information and we'll move forward from there and provide additional updates as needed. All right, thank you, Wayne. At this point in time, is there anything else? If there isn't, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed by nay? No, oh, nobody said no. So good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye.